So you saw through the commercials of 1994 that four of those Mariners had side jobs during the 94 strike. And it was going into 1995. And then these Mariners commercials went on a more historical archive approach. When I saw them myself, I was thinking, okay, this is kind of weird, but, but I'm going to react to these and see what my reactions are. And before I do, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell. What's in it for me? Well, what's in it for you? Well, you're going to get constant Mariners updates in the currents, and I'm going to give you some Mariners history throughout the time because there are some Mariners history that needs to be unfolded that I do believe that not many people talk about. So that's my goal of this channel and looking to expand to other Seattle sports content as well. So stay tuned. So let's start with this one. Of course, nowadays you have your closer. And the classic closer is Bobby Ayala. Bobby Ayala? Well, it turns out he was the closer in 1994. Turns out he had a pretty decent season. I guess he was the closer of the future at the time. But then after that, not so much. He, he takes a look, finds Bobby Ayala, and guess what? Brian Giles rocks his world. Six batters up, six batters in, 6-3, tribe after six. He comes striding in, looking mean, the beard, those eyes. The man is scary. Doesn't look that scary at all. It was only scary when he gets on the mound because he would just completely blow the game. Today. That one is in a long way to right field. Buehler is back. It is gone. If he came to my house on Halloween, I'd give him all the candy that he wanted. Actually, I would give him all the candy because his late inning efforts terrified me. So my thoughts on that commercial, it was pretty cringe. I mean, I guess at the time, Bobby Ayala was actually a decent pitcher, but then he was terrible just right after that. I cannot believe the Mariners made a commercial on him. Well, here is the next commercial. Let's take a look. Young Randy Johnson's neighbors could see his fastball coming. Well, Randy was our paper boy, and every afternoon he'd ride his bike down the street whipping papers. Well, even then, he threw 70 to 80 miles an hour. Was he really a paper boy when he was a child? I actually did look it up and see if he was a paper boy. The only thing I got was he played basketball and baseball as a kid. That's all I got. And his father was a police officer. Well, one day he beamed the family cat Whiskers. Whiskers survived, but he's never been the same. Well, that was kind of prophetic. This commercial said that he beamed a cat and eventually he beamed a bird. So I guess this commercial predicted that he was going to hit something. There was another commercial of Randy Johnson being the paper boy as well. I, for example, have a paper out. So I guess this commercial predicted the future for that commercial. That commercial was okay. I think it was better than Bobby Ayala. The Bobby Ayala one was really cringe. Well, here goes the next one. The historical parallels between Babe Ruth and Ken Griffey Jr. are, are remarkable. Oh, let's see how this really connects. I'm looking forward to see this. Remarkable. Uh, Ruth was a left-hand power hitter. Griffey is a left-hand power hitter. Yes, they were. Ruth played for New York. Griffey has been to New York. So first of all, the only way you could really connect this, Griffey only lived in New York, unfortunately for him, because his dad played for the Yankees, which his dad really hated. And there was a funny story from Secret Base about the Mariners, Seattle Mariners, Dorktown, where Griffey Sr. basically no-showed out of the Yankees. Take a look. It's 1986. The Yankees are a few innings into a game. Their left fielder, Ken Griffey Sr., is supposed to be there. But he's not. He's so miserable as a Yankee that he's decided to stay home across the river in Jersey. So that's the only way you could make that connection where Ken Griffey Sr. played for the New York Yankees and Babe Ruth played for the New York Yankees, but not much of a connection there for Ken Griffey Jr. directly. Like Griffey, Ruth often wore his cap backwards. Well, not in this picture. I actually did find one picture of Babe Ruth wearing his hat backwards, but not playing baseball. Coincidence? I say conspiracy that guy's a nut job 
I don't think it's much of a coincidence or a conspiracy, not even anything of those. They didn't really connect well. I think this commercial was really forcing it. Now on to the next commercial. They don't come any tougher than right fielder Jay Buhner. The thing about Buhner isn't just his rifle arm, it's explosive power. He certainly had fantastic power and a great throwing arm, that's for sure. It's the haircut. It's the Buhner buzz. Forget Mantle, forget Ruth, forget Cobb. Uh, in my view, the weirdest haircut in all of Major League Baseball history belongs to Jay Buhner. All bald Jay Buhner. And his baldness made him famous so much that he actually had a Buhner buzz cut night events. If you wanted to get a free haircut, completely go bald, go to a Mariners game on Buhner Buzz Cut Night. You get a free haircut, all bald. The third annual Buhner Buzz Cut Night once again invited fans to go bald, just like their hero, Jay Buhner, shaved 3,362 new baldies. Jay came out as usual to help buzz a few, and inside the dome, he didn't disappoint his throng of bald fans in right field. Now the wind and the one-two pitch on the way to Buhner. Swung on and dealt it. Deep to left center field. Now let it go, you Buhner fans. Fly away. I went bald once, and I'll never do it again. He was a raw rookie in 1990, but he changed the face of Mariners baseball. The Mariner Moose, he is a heavy contributor to the Seattle Mariners history. When I first saw him, I thought, that's not a mascot, that's a lump of shag carpeting with antlers. When I first met him, he stole my nachos at the Kingdom when I was a kid. But then I saw him dance, skate, and I realized this kid is a natural. He may just ride that little scooter straight into Cooperstown someday. Well, maybe not. Nah, let's put him in the Cooperstown. Let's put him in the Hall of Fame for mascots. Let's start getting those out there. Mariner Moose is actually my favorite mascot of all time out of all of them. And go ahead and comment on your most favorite mascot of all time in Seattle sports or sports in general. Now Lou Pinella has a tough image, but there's a thoughtful side to Lou. One summer, my daughter broke her leg roller skating and in one game that season, Lou came after me. He said, you're blind. How could you miss that call? You're bush league. Come on, get your head in the game. I like how they connected that with him and arguing. Oh, another thing. I hope your daughter feels better. That's the kind of guy that Lou is. It actually was kind of true. I think there was a time where even after he argues with the umpire, at the very end, he goes, all right, yeah, we're cool. I like how this commercial like gave a second perspective for Lou Pinella, saying that he was not just some guy that just argues with umpires. And I like that they put an umpire in this commercial to explain everything. So those commercials were okay overall. I think I still like the 1994 ones the best. The only one that was really cringeful for the 1995 one was the Ken Griffey Jr. and Bobby Ayala. Bobby Ayala because that commercial way overhyped him at the time. And then he turned into one of the more worst bullpens in Mariners history. As for the Ken Griffey Jr. one, I didn't like it because that one was just trying too hard just to connect all the dots with Babe Ruth. And they didn't even have a picture of Babe Ruth with his hat backwards. How'd they mess that up? So that's my reaction on the Mariners commercials for 1995. 1996 will be coming its way. And if you did like this video, hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And once again, I will say it again, the reason why you should follow this channel is I do give updates on the Mariners, and I'm going to try to do for other Seattle sports as much as I can, mostly the Seahawks for now. And I, of course, want to unfold as much Mariners history as possible, some history content of the Seattle Mariners that you might not know about. So please subscribe so you can look forward to those in the future.